afternoon, guys. So welcome to our AI podcast by MLDA at Triple E. So today we are honored to invite Prof. Huang Guangbin as our guest. So Prof. Huang is from uh, NTU Triple E, and he was awarded the 2014 and 15 uh, highly cited researcher and also the world's most influential scientific minds. And his main topic of research is about extreme learning machines. So it's really nice to meet you, Prof. So uh, for the audience that are not familiar with our lab, so MLDA at Triple E is a student-led machine learning lab and uh, we are also studying in the data analytics. So if you are interested in AI, our lab is definitely going to be a good place for you. So uh, my name is Injie, and I'm also a year two student from Triple E. So uh, Prof, I believe many audiences in front of the screen are undergraduate students. So um, we are all curious that when you are at our age, so what motivates you to uh, step into the field of Okay, so first, uh, thank the EJ and uh, the MLDA Triple E for the kind invitation. So it's my great honor uh, to have the chance to share my experience with all the students in Triple E and uh, as well as in NTU. Uh, in so when I was at this age, actually, we had a lot of dreams. Yeah. So I actually was admitted in uh, math department. Oh, math. Yeah, yeah. So then those days, I think I can self learn math. So then uh, I look for another department, you know, for interdisciplinary uh, studying. So in one is communication. Mm -hmm. So those days, I think we better to learn interdisciplinary knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then go to the go to the so-called uh, masters and we go to the computer engineering. So those days we are thinking, uh, so what we can do in the future? Yeah. Okay, so we look for something which can uh, integrate the knowledge, right? Get the synergy between among their mass, uh, one is communication and also computer, computer engineering and software. Okay, so that is the uh, my dream and yeah. also uh, same as all of you, most of you here, I also luckily to be one of the team or student leaders. So that they also also help us a lot in the future mm. research yeah. and also career development. Yeah, mm. so uh, I think as young people, mm. we are all dreaming about uh, being green. So um, looking at your achievement today, so uh, mm. I think we all very uh, admire that kind of experience of being able to do something helpful to the society. So I think um, the audience and I also are uh, not too uh, deeply involved in uh, extreme learning machine, which is uh, ELM. So uh, Prof, how would you explain the extreme uh, learning machine to a, a freshman on this field? Uh, and what, of, uh, what are some of the advantages of ELM compared to other deep learning uh, strategies. Okay, let, let me share my uh, my my past experience with you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was I graduated from NTU, so oh, okay. I I I actually graduated from NTU with PhD degree in 1998. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So those days is the uh, AI went to a second winter. Yeah, okay. yeah. So most of the people working on back propagation algorithm, you know, so that the, the students around me, most of them uh, uh, spend a lot of time on tuning parameters, tuning the uh, BP algorithms. So such as they are learning read and how to get out of local minimum usage. So mm -hmm. those days actually I I, you know, my, my experience is different from other because I come from math point of view. Yeah, yeah. So I ask myself why the uh, BP, you know, it, it seems to run very slow, right? but the brain actually is, you know, even our neurons, the uh, operation frequency is very, very low. Yeah. And why the brain uh, so called runs so fast? And there's a first question. The second question is uh, uh, all the neural networks architecture are very perfect. You know, is the uh, but the brain is some kind of resonant, right? Yes. Is yes. the uh, 
is 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 uh, is perf- uh, is it seems not perfect. Yeah. Right. Compared to the computers, but actually it's do perfect job. Yeah. So I think these two are contradictory. So those days they are. Uh, I did not spend much time on backpropagation area, but I many focus on uh, so-called theoretical part mm. of the neural networks. So those days we come out uh, because I have this math background. So we prove we so did some kind of theoretical research work, and then we found maybe the uh, hopeless AI is hopeless. <laughs> so then I left uh, so-called the research community and joined mm. the. Uh, uh, so called Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Technology, right? So I, I say I, I better move away from AI. So then uh, six, three years later, I found that is 2001. So then I found uh, most of the people still tuning parameters, right? So yeah. then we know that so called the BP algorithm have a local minimum issue. So then I say whether the research itself also stuck in local minimum. Yeah. Right. So then I say, hey, I, I have the math background. Possibly I also can do something on machine learning. So this is why I come back to NTU. So I appreciate it. NTU give me give me such an opportunity for research. So I come back to NTU. So then 2001 I come back. Then 2000 until 2006, I, I also feel very struggling. I found I have nothing to do except for uh, backpropagation algorithm. Right. But I know that it works, but it's different, far away from the uh, brain. So those yeah. days I feel very depressed. So then I read the uh, Three Kingdom story, you know, Three Kingdom story three, seven times. So that old traditional Chinese uh, book still in my office in until, <laughs> you know, in the bookshelf. Yeah, I feel, you know, hopeless. Mm. So I read, read, then I found, okay, because when you read, you see a lot of, uh, uh, characters, so many people, and then something re- helped me realize so many people, you know, live in the past uh, thousand years. So then the question coming, why the brain, you know, the uh, run so fast? Yeah. Right. So in the past the several thousand years, we may have the mean, the beings of people, do they have the similar learning algorithm? If yes, but then they live in different environments. So then is there any kind of common learning mechanism mm. which is uh, uh, so-called efficient for all the different brains yeah. in different uh, uh, environment? So then we say when you go to the different environment, there's something that help me think about that learning algorithm possibly independent from the training data. Yeah. So then this is the first idea for ERM, so random. So that means the uh, randomness in the neurons in the in, in the neural network. So in other words, the neurons in the brain it to be tuning. Mm. Okay, so these are the first things. So then we further we spend uh, several years on so called proving the universal pro- approximation capability and also universal classific- classification capability of ERM. So roughly five years. So we feel happy or so so but ideally is so why the brain works so fast? Because the the only need to adjust the synapse. The neuron itself need to be tuning. Okay, so this is the first thing. Second thing, we see uh, so many uh, so-called uh, different kind of learning algorithm like uh, uh, or architecture, like uh, SVM, right? Like a uh, PCA, etc., or NMF, you know, so many kind of the machine learning techniques. Then we find uh, actually the common learning, uh, so-called the part behind it is actually is nonlinearity of the neuron. And then most of them is tuning the new. Uh, so called uh, non entity, but then to ERM, then we don't need tuning. So then, if we don't need tuning the parameters, just random generate, then those also can be unified. The second, third, because we see the brain and the computers are different, different material. But then, to me, this not just different material. You know, brain is a protein based, right? So mer- computer machine is silicon based. But yeah. they all had the similar so-called learning algorithms. Yes. One called AI, one called biological learning. But if we do not cons- the, you could not the materials actually the same. Yeah. Just just made up of the different kind of the uh, uh, materials, right? Smart yes. materials. So this, so this is why we call extreme learning machine means it crosses the boundary of the biological learning and the uh, so-called the uh, computer-based learning. Ignore the materials. So this is the first. Yes. The second, why you call extreme learning? Because we say the BP algorithm is good, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, runs very slowly. Yeah. 
So ERM also breaks this boundary for learning speed, right? So the third, because we know that SVNs for the vector machine, NMF, non-negative non metric factorization, uh, PSA means principal component analysis, et cetera. So then we found extreme learning machine actually can unify those kind of techniques. So we have Ooh. some paper published. That means they are actually provided suboptimal solutions. But SVM, I also mentioned before in public paper. So when you go to the second AI winter, without a web leak, right, without hint, et cetera, actually the, uh, is, is very different for AI community to move forward. Yeah. So web leak, who invented the support vector machine has made significant historical contribution to AI, you know? So yeah. that is uh, general ideas. Okay, then computer deep learning, I think is the, uh, deep learning is great. When I was the, uh, I gave a talk in Microsoft uh, research uh, in Seattle in 2001, those days there are very few people working on deep learning. Mm -hmm. Even they asked me, so do you understand of deep learning? I said, well, what is deep learning? So you go to Google to search it very, even you could find such a term in uh, through mm -hmm. the Google. Um, so, but, uh, you know, so then the people never give up. So then find the deep learning become very popular. So deep learning is very good especially a lot of the uh, open source there. So deep learning is good for uh, big and complicated data. Okay, yeah. big and complicated with complicated features. Yes. But then deep learning is also some kind of bottleneck. You know, when the data is not big or the data is big, but uh, the feature is not complicated. So that is diff difficult. For example, you have two yeah. data. Say, for example, here we have, we have the bottle and the mic. Mm -hmm. So then you have only two data. Yeah, yeah. So SVM works, but deep learning may not work, right? Yeah. Uh, so that is a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. So then ERM, actually, we have one paper published. So ERM actually compare is the ERM. So SVM provides suboptimal solution. So then the ERM is efficient for small to medium data or big data with a simple or easier picture. So these two actually provide the good compensation. Yes. Good compensation, okay? So, so that means there are no one algorithm actually is the uh, uh, base in all the cases, definitely all the algorithm related to the data, the quality of data, volume of data. So I think this uh, good synergy. So deep learning work for the big and complicated data, especially for GPU, for server base. Yes. And then ERM works for the small data to medium data or big data with the uh, uh, easier features. So that is good for age computing. Yeah. So one for Cloud one for age, so combined together, what is I call universal learning. Hopefully, that is that dream is true. Okay. Yes. So, mm. uh, if I understand correctly, right. so uh, ELM mm. will approach the uh, structure of uh, biological mm. structure mm. Uh, in a more mm. efficient way mm. than the other deep learnings, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Yes. So, um, mm. actually, many of our audiences, uh, we are all interested in AI research. So uh, could you share with us how you succeed in reaching the uh, highly cited researchers and also the most mm. influential uh, scientific mm. brains in the 2014 and uh, 2015? Oh, that is a, that's a story that happened 60 years ago. Yeah. Then after then, uh, I mean, not only me, NTU actually is a significant, uh, have a significant number of the uh, highly research uh, cited researchers. Mm. Of course, in 2014, then the first time we received the, uh, uh, the notice from Web of Science, uh, Tom Schroeder say we, I think those days are four of us in NTU listed as the highly cited researcher. Mm. We also feel excited, right? Yeah. Afraid, oh, they, what is this? So, so the, actually that is already passed. The, uh, so I think this I have to, we have to appreciate the so-called contribution from the AI community, from the rest of the world, because mm. they, even for ERM is not only from our team, or although it's original from our team, we, we, we spend a lot of time, but actually, luckily, a lot of people move into these areas, yes. especially before deep learning become popular. Yes. You know, most mm. people working on SVM and BP area, and so those days a lot of people shift to ERM, right? So, so that means the, uh, Overall, these uh, have to appreciate the contribution from others. Then the first, second is I think we never do research do something else, right? So teamwork very important, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, you need to share your research idea with others, right? Meanwhile, you also learn something from others. So yes. then you become a, 
uh, Sukhoi is a good ecosystem. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we should uh, contribute to the whole community <clears throat> in order <throat> to reach our own success. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, we are all in the uh, in the same same boat. I have to <clears throat> say. Yeah. Yeah. So in some. Yeah. In some way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Some sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, uh, we all know that. Uh, uh, Prof, you also started a uh, startup company. So, uh, what motivates you to do uh, entrepreneurship? Okay, that that is also is the uh, I think is somehow also related to randomness, right? So we have a career career school, career path. For example, either is academic, mm. I or, or either just just yes. live in university and then join the company, especially around 2016, 2015, uh, you know, it's a lot of the uh, company, especially on AI, yes. right? Looking for the uh, top scientists in the world to join them. Yeah. And the 2001, 2011, when I gave a talk in some university in the world, I told them maybe five years later, most of you may, be, may become a millionaire if your research on AI, yeah. I said, yeah, uh, so-called, I mean, 2011, right? So I said, 10 years ago, if you graduate with AI, when you, after you graduate, means you lose your job, you can't find a job. But yeah. now I say five years later, many of you will become meaning there. So the first thing I found is this trend is, is AI euro is coming. Mm. Then second, because the, uh, Actually, I, I also was ask myself, should I leave NTU, right? So then you join a company and a good, mm. very good pay, you know, even five <laughs> times or 10 times thing, uh, <laughs> then you get academic, frank speaking. Yeah. But then the, uh, because I graduated from NTU, right? I have yeah. good, uh, so called, so many friends around in campus. So in general, I like NTU, right? Mm. So, so then I say, how do I uh, move forward, right? So, and, and also, as as I mentioned to you, because even I was an undergraduate student, I I, I like the math, uh, wireless communication software engineer. Then I jo after getting a PhD degree from NTU, then join an industry. So somehow I still have the industry some some, some kind of the uh, gene there. Yeah. Yeah. So then I say why not the uh, and also I think personal think because the uh, those days. I found NTU is actually very open-minded. Mm, Encourage yes. faculty to have a spin-off. Encourage students to have a spin-off. Although I don't know how to set up. So then say, why not set up a company? Yeah. Right. So then uh, also can build a platform for the research further. Mm. Uh, so this is why I move forward. But then uh, again, I have to appreciate the uh, support from, from the university, from the school, from the, uh, the rest community uh, in the world, because most of them actually encourage, support us uh, uh, in one way or another. So yes. this somehow now is a turning point. I, I think it will be very successful. And the one day I also talked to the intuitive and all other people in you know, NTU. Actually, in the early days, I say Yunnan Garden, right? Yunnan Garden is a, is a nice place. I say one day we will make the city come So those days, uh, innovation, you know, you the innovation center around there. I say well, that day we can make this uh, become a very successful venue for AI. Okay, so that is we set up a company. We have a spin off. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so um, I think uh, your. <clears throat> Uh, currently, achievement also come from mm. your being open-minded, mm. uh, not limiting yourself to academic. Mm. I think. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. We we need to have a cross platform. So we have an interdisciplinary, right? So we have a yes. you have a triple, you have a SES, you know, school of mm. computer engineering, SCSE, right? Yeah. Even some other. Mm -hmm. So that is in, within the academic. So then from the uh, research synergy from uh, idea, especially for AI, AI can't run away without the industries support yes right yes so then we should have the so-called platform cross mm. between the uh, academic and, and the industry you know so even for ai it's a three wave of ai development the first wave from 1950s to 1980s mm. is is a dream warm up so we have the ai dream but they were realized right yeah. so then 1980s to 2010 is the research driven so many of the uh, AI algorithms actually developed those days, like mm. deep learning, SVM, etc. 
But then that is still far away from industry. Yes. And since 2010 is really good to the, uh, we are going to the true AI era due to data driven mm -hmm. era coming. Yes. Right. So that means you have to get a motivation from industry. Otherwise, you are doing closing door. That is good. That is good for AI. But do not forget, you need to have the feedback from industry. And then your idea will be verified by, validated by industry. So then these two will help each other. Then you can become successful. If you're just working on academic or just work in industry, I think it's very challenging for AI uh, research, research and development. Yes. Mm. So for <coughs> those of us who are interested <coughs> in being uh, doing a startup, so uh, according to Prof. Wong, uh, <coughs> uh, audiences, we have to be uh, open-minded and also search <coughs> for the support from the overall environment and industry. Yeah, sure. Yes. <coughs> so um, according to one of our audiences, so he asked, um, what is the next stage, do you think? Uh, of the development of ELM and uh, what's the direction of research. So mm -hmm. this must be uh, what you are mm -hmm. like good at the field. Okay. Yeah. So in general, yes. my dream is the, uh, you see the brain, how the brain works. I mm -hmm. think brain is, it, it's complicated, but also very simple. Yes. So this is why doctors even do surgery. They don't worry about it, you know, too, too worry about the architecture of the brain for the particular area. But brain also region by region, right? Yes. So so is the is the overall structure, but locally I say locally messy, <laughs> locally messy. So then I found I this is my 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 expectation or my uh, uh, my idea is brain overall structure locally disorder. So then is the uh, even the layer by layer, right? So it's a layer by layer. So so then those kind of module, mm. okay. They can share the same different. They can so same module can work for different function like uh, yes. machine learning, like a classification, clustering, uh, fiction learning, compression, uh, sparse coding, regression, right? Mm. So I, this is why my dream. So ERM actually works say same architecture for different function, but nowadays many many so called artificial neural network or, or, or AI. So they have different architecture for different purpose. Mm. So you yes. have different architecture oh. classification different arterial so sparse coding so the next step is that we are trying to unify this mm. but uh, we actually have the paper published using yarn for sparse coding clustering according for different purposes it's true then the second as what i just mentioned is for svm pca nmf etc yarn actually is the uh, uh is uh, it's uh, actually give up, uh, some kind of unifying platform for yes. them so then the third the third is the uh uh, actually, this also idea I discussed with other researchers in, in overseas, okay, overseas researchers. So basically, idea is they are, so uh, we possibly mm. to move forward that deep learning. So ERM and deep learning have some kind of synergy, you know. So this I also give the talk in different uh, universities or, or the uh, conference. So I think that that is the main steps for us. So how can we uh, merge deep learning and uh, uh, ERM together? Mm. Because ERM is good enough, say small to medium data, and then the deep learning works for the big data. So then combine together become a wonderful <laughs> uh, ideas, right? Yeah. So then we also, in principle, we can prove say ERM, deep learning plus ERM uh, definitely better than deep learning alone. Yeah. Also deep, better than ERM alone mm, means yes. two better than one. So that, that we can prove. Okay, so that is the next step we wish to move forward. So again, why we have spin off company? Because the, uh, you need money, you need the support for research, you know. Mm. So this is why we, and also data, right? Stage. So, so hopefully when the uh, platform, everything is, uh, is, is ready, mature, I think the, uh, we may have some, hopefully we can have some good ideas to, to discover mm. further. <clears throat> yes. So um, uh, we are entering our next session mm -hmm. about uh, the questions asked by audiences uh, before uh, this session, mm. before our podcast. So uh, I already see many audiences sending questions to our uh, chat. Mm -hmm. So uh, audiences, if you have any further question, feel free to post in the chat and uh, we will discuss your questions uh, according to our time limitation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free to ask anything uh, about uh, our uh, ELM and uh, Prof Huang. Mm -hmm. 
and we will discuss it. So um, our next question from audiences was that uh, he asked, what's the cutting edge technology for AI currently? Do you think it's ALM? Okay, it's <laughs> ERM and the, I see just one of, mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, AI techniques. So you have SVM, you have the deep learning, means so you have a lot of the uh, uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. So in general, I think in general, mm -hmm. so so early days, most of the uh, tech, uh, so called the uh, AI implementation, uh, implementing the server. Yes. Uh, a very expensive server. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that one of the trend is to move to the age. Right, so age learning is very important, mm. and the age learning is not easy. Okay, so the second is the AI plus IoT. So IoT means the three portions. So you have the intellect, and as backbone, and then you have the sensors, collect data, transfer data to server through intellect. Mm. Right, so yes. server to data analytics. I think the next trend would be very important is that they sensor need to be intelligent. Mm. So intelligent sensor. So then data can, uh, the sensor can collect data process data, only transfer useful data to servers. So mm. I think that is uh, also very important, yes. okay? Mm. And then the, the third one is currently, what I just mentioned, say, deep learning is dependent on large data, right? So ERM still have some limitation as well. Mm. So then how to uh, moving, more say that, so come out some kind of architecture, which can handle both small to medium data to large data. So that is become a very important, very important, okay? So then again, the rest maybe the unsupervised learning, et cetera, right? So now it's the AI, artificial intelligence, right? Artificial intelligence. So one day I taught the people, AI actually not easy. Yeah. AI also main part intensive job. Yes. So yes. so we need to spend a lot of time on labeling data, collect data, labeling their data, so clean the data, mm, etc. Yes. So that they so how to make those the uh, AI job become easier? Uh, yeah. that is actually is a big question. Yeah. You know, a very challenging. So uh, I think it's an efficient uh, algorithm, say so efficient unsupervised unsupervised learning algorithm also very, very important. Mm. Right. So yes. of course then there a lot of part is there. Uh uh, we, we still miss one gap because the, uh, with the AI, it's good, so it can be used here and there, but it's still not in the science level. Yeah. Right? It's like math. We, every, all of, even monkey can know one plus one equal to two, right? Mm -hmm. So then until some kind of math system built, and then math can move forward, right? So yeah. the entire thing. So then same as the AI. So now we are still in like a monkey trying <laughs> here in the case, et cetera. So it's still far away from the entire uh, so-called architecture. Mm -hmm. We need to build the architecture and then AI can be controlled and AI can be become transparent and then we can, everyone become progressive. Everyone can use the uh, AI, but now it's still very far away from this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So um, <clears throat> another question from uh, <clears throat> we students. So uh, this is a uh, first year student <clears throat> And uh, uh, he asks, uh, do you have any suggestion for a first year mm. uh, uni student mm. uh, if he is interested in uh, AI career? Mm. I think this, uh, this is a question that we all want to ask mm. because we are all uh, pursuing an academic now mm. and uh, someday we'll eventually go to Korea. Mm. So do you have any suggestions? Okay, for, for the student for AI, mm. okay, you very, you are, if you are really interested in AI, okay, yeah. it's, it, it, it's not say, uh, because the AI now area is hot, so a lot, most likely they get a higher pay uh, in AI. So this is why I move to AI, okay. Mm. So you, you are really interested in AI. So what I suggest first, you need to find a good supervisor. Mm. You know, now we like a blank paper, yeah. right? So someone can help you to draw the paper, draw the figures, nice pictures. So, so that is very important, mm. right? So, he, he, so, so that means you see that Newton is a, they stand on the shoulder of the giants. So I think that is very important. Mm, yes. And then the second, you need to be self-motivated, purely self-motivated. So you feel interested, right? So mm. then you read the papers, do, do kind of the uh, trial here and there, right? Uh, yeah. AI, Actually, in many cases, it depends on triering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, then you uh, should be proactive, the 
involved in different kind of uh, events, yeah. data, yeah. you know, application, et cetera. So I think that is very important, right? Mm -hmm. So then meanwhile, because the, you, you must be a fast self learner. So yeah. then you can, you know, join this, the uh, course, another course means to broaden your knowledge, mm -hmm. your view. Yes. So that is very important. Of course, from AI point of view, mm -hmm. AI has a, uh, AI expertise have several aspects. You have that definitely coding also very important. Mm. But logical thinking is also very important. Yes. So you need to be very good in logical thinking and also coding. Because otherwise you only can dream, but you cannot realize. Uh, no, I, I, my age, I know it's a problem. We, we can dream, but cannot re realize, right? Yeah. And, and, and also for, uh, so for the invention, mm. for the uh, so-called research, uh, uh, breakthrough. Actually, there is a uh, golden age period, mm. right? So most of the uh, significant ideas come around age twenty, age thirty. Too early, maybe too young, right? Your, mm. your knowledge is limited. Yeah. But too, too late, maybe you don't have energy anymore. Mm. So, yes. so this is why I say the year one student. So roughly is the twenty age twenty. So I think that time just nice because mm. you need time to accumulate your, you know, some knowledge, right? Your experience, then go to the age around just 30, 28, 29, you, you can get a breakthrough yeah. kind of the uh, invention. So I said that age, do not the, uh, waste your time in the uh, school as an undergraduate student. So you, I can go back to undergraduate student, I will have different life anymore. So have different gym. So that time is uh, very precious. Yes. Yeah. So first, talk to the good supervisor. Yes. Right. Uh, then find a good internship. Mm. Right. Yes. Look, you may have a look or company or what, whatever. Right. Find a good company. Mm. Right. Good yeah. team, and then proactive learning, fast learning. Yes. Okay. And also <clears throat> being self motivated. Yeah, that is yeah. very important. That is critical. <clears throat> yes. Mm. So uh, the next upcoming question is a, a technical <clears throat> question. <clears throat> so uh, he asks. Uh, what do you think about the future of the GANs? Mm. Uh, for the audiences who are not uh, aware of GANs, it means the Generative mm. Adversarial Networks. Mm. So it is also a kind of, uh, I understand it as a deep learning structure as well. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm First, I'm not expert in the uh, GAN, but the GAN is a nice work. Right? Yes. It's a very mm. nice work. Uh, I think not only GAIN, even others, actually GAIN is represent one of the future mm. uh, AI techniques. So uh, currently most of the uh, machine learning architecture uh, based on the recreation and the classification capability uh, theory, we, we actually proved this also before 20 years ago. Mm. Uh, I think the other part is the uh, learning actually come from contest, even yes. as a human, right? Mm. So why yeah. is it? Uh, for example, this uh, water bottle and the mic, why different, right? You, yeah, you need to learn from the mm. con uh, feature from the context. So yeah. I think that is the, uh, very important. So maybe this kind of idea maybe extend to other machine learning like ERM. So these days I'm not thinking whether ERM plus again, you know, in some ways, I, I will call for a meeting from my research team, say whether we can learn from gang as well, right? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So, um, next question is uh, very interesting. So, uh, he asked that, would AI be proficient one day enough to be able to predict future human behaviors, uh, behaviors Sorry, and based on their uh, present actions and traits? Uh, th th this question is, uh, <laughs> is very challenging. Actually, it's very interesting. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, let me think in this way. Of course, this is some like a dream, okay. Let me think of this way. Human is human. I just mentioned human is uh, made of the proteins. Yes. Mm. Computer robot is from silicon. Mm. You cannot the uh, materials, just different kind of smart material. Yes. Okay. So human also machine. Yeah. In other words, right? Yeah. Ah, mm. So machine is machine. So human is a machine. So human actually is for the moment that we can consider like a robot, mm. super robot. And also like uh, like sensors, you know, you know, all, all of us actually not part of that whole world in, in, in inter 
means IoT, right? In, uh, all connected together. So we actually have the independent thinking, but we are also like a super sensors. We yeah. collect data and analyze data. So ourself is AI plus IoT in some sense, right? So mm -hmm. sensor, collect data, analyze data. Yeah. Okay. So overall, we have our own behavior, mm. but in some sense, we are also kind of, kind of the intelligent machine. Yes. Right. So from this point of view, we also can do data analysis on ourselves. Mm. So then can predict what is the future for you. In some sense, right? Yeah. yeah. So means uh, say, based on large data, big data. And also, so many behavior already analyzed. Mm. So many people already analyzed. Then for yourself, roughly, how much, you know, how how do we, uh, how confident we have for to predict your behavior? Actually, mm. some kind of things there, you know. So we just consider two like a human and a machine are two different functions. Yes. So machine is function one. Then robot is function two. Right, mm. like a like a like a like a mess, yeah. just in two different world, made of different materials. Yes. Okay. Ignore the materials. Just two functions. F one, F two. So you can predict F one. Of course, you also can predict F two. Yeah. But not done now, right? Not mm. done in the ten years. Maybe five hundred years later, five hundred years later, right? Yeah. Because they have more. Say the AI maybe become a more scientific. Mm. And then they can, a lot of data is already coming, and then can predict. And then even from your ancestors, <laughs> predict <laughs> what the legs. Okay, mm. that is why I say like a dream. Yeah. But it, it somehow is reasonable. Mm. Yes. Right? Mm. So, but not, you can't. Yeah. Okay. It's still mm. affected by environment in the future. But even in the future, you can affect by environment, somehow can be predictable. Yes. In the future. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> do you think? Uh, thinking like this way uh, from long time ago, uh, since it's your dream. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the, the this 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 why I say I always can consider con human is just a function. Yeah, human is not mm. another just different kind of material. So these are uh, actually in, in my brain for a long time. If we talk about okay, since a student, right? We talk about F UFO for example, mm. we always. We also ask such question, is there a UFO? Mm. Okay. My idea is if there is a UFO around Earth, that UFO is not a muscle based. <laughs> it's, it's not a material because they are flying from, you know, far away, right? From a lot of places, mm. a lot of planted here is they already maybe a uh, meaning years come here, meanings here, right? Yeah. Uh, meanings here come here. So then in between, it's not the original human, yeah. right? Mm. So it, it's kind of material. So now it, it's, it's a kind of the uh, already is the maybe much more intelligent than the human in Earth. But then imagine millions of years later, what happened in Earth? Hey, we may not have had a human in living in this Earth anymore. Yeah. You see why? From the monkey to uh, now, millions of years. From the modern human now is is uh, two hundred thousand years, right? Yeah. And then from the people who can uh, so called have the physics system ideas, it means that come out of physical system, math mm. system, chemical system. It's only latest several hundred years. Mm. Yes. So now, AI robot researcher is the uh, we fear some kind of the uh, threaten. Only the latest the ten years. So imagine hundred years later, what happens? What sorts of years later, what happens, right? So mm -hmm. millions of years later, what happens? So 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 in the, in other words, like a UFO. So you can imagine UFO will come here. That is, uh, if they come, is not like a modern human. It's mm -hmm. a definitely another kind of the material mm -hmm. with intelligence, right? Yes. So so this is why I call brief knife of living things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, another student asked a similar question. That mm. he asked, "Do you think AI will rule mankind? Uh, mankind one day?" So, I think, uh, mm. uh, in mm. in my understanding, uh, you will think uh, AI will be able to um, 
be smarter than mankind in the long future? Okay, there are two turning points. Mm. I consider there are two turning points coming. The first turning point, or or self, do not compare others, only yourself. Okay, mankind. So all intelligence now is uh, is there a limit or not? Actually, now we become more and more clumsy. Yeah, Without yeah. smartphone, we are we were actually very smart. Mm. We can remember a lot of phone numbers, right? We can do calculation easily. But with smartphone, now we we lose our good memory, yeah. right? We can't do calculation very quickly, etc. So it's mm. a kind of the uh, limit, mm. right? Yes. So this is a first turning point. Okay, early days, right? The, the intelligence index, right? So now it's uh, become a flat. Then in the future. We depend more and more on um, more and more on AI technique. We will depend more and more on smart devices. Yes. But even we, even we don't know how to drive in the future. Mm. Then do you think we have become a smarter and smarter? In the future, no more taxi driver. Mm. You don't drive the car by yourself. Your automatic vehicle will be ready. Yes. Agree, right? So mm. so I think that first turning point. The second turning point is what good the question you just asked. Mm. So second, because the robot become independent, car intelligent, okay, mic intelligent, even mic intelligent. So now, say you have a quality, you know, control, you say, even later on, I move around, then the mic will follow you, mm. right, uh, whatever, you know. So a lot of, say, UAV become intelligent, everything. Mm. So even it seems insects flying, you don't know that it's a robot mm. or is a if the original living things, right, I don't know. So then you see each of them become more and more intelligent. And then you have more and more such kind of in intelligent things. So overall, add together what happened. The overall, in I call intelligent index, were going up. Yes. Right? And also human, one generation in 20 years, how a robot? Benny based. Yeah. Right, yeah. and then they can change their ideas. They learn from each other's. Mm, yes, real time in real time. Yeah, no need to wait for twenty years. No need to back off it to share idea. No need to have a meeting. They can easily. Yeah. yeah. So then overall, mm. just imagine significant. I mean, overall in intelligent. I call it intelligent index of non-living things where mm. significantly uh, increase. Okay. Yes. So, and all. Us is fixed. They are increasing. So one day they will break that turning point. So that is second turning point. Maybe yeah. say 500 years later. Okay. Right? Yeah. So then robot will be much more intelligent than us. Mm. Like doctor. For example, doctor say daily. Every, every day you see, even the doctor can see, uh, can see the patient say yes. uh, 50. Mm. Say maximum 50, a soup doctor. A year, how many? A year is just the uh, uh, so called is the uh, uh, 10,000, mm. right? Or 15,000. Mm. Then who knows time? 100 years. A doctor can see okay, in 100 years is one meaning, say one meaning. Mm. But if the robot, what happened? Robot is not just see the, uh, you know, the, have the knowledge for one meaning patients mm. only. They can quickly read all the doctor, uh, so called the uh, medicine books all, across the thousand years. And then every year, billions of the patient's information they can share. Yeah. So, so then, which one is smarter? The of course, robot, yeah. machine. Yeah. So imagine. So one day, I think that turning point will come, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's only when it will come. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, as a student, I still remember mm. in 2016, so mm. the uh, mm. Go playing machine, the AlphaGo comes yeah. out. Yeah. So I remember the AlphaGo uh, mm. is able to like play the games much faster mm. than human. So I think uh, that matches uh, what, uh, what Prop you said. Mm. So it's like mm -hmm. they can finish the games uh, in one day that in the quantity mm. of mm. one human player can play in his whole life. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, in yeah. the future, even just one second, we can, mm. you know, can, can learn all the games they have the, uh, uh, played by the human for the whole lifetime. Yes. Uh. Actually, um, in some like science fiction, uh, sometimes uh, they will assume that 
maybe one day uh, the human brain will be able to uh, interact or even be equipped with uh, artificial intelligence. Do, do you think that's um, also one of the possibilities? Of course, that is not happening. Mm. You say is something wrong with the, this part of the brain, say some, some kind of neuron or synapse, then can put a chip there, mm. right? Uh, and then according to the ERM the theory, then that neuron, you can put any random neuron. So they can fill in the gap, you know, can replace that neuron and then brain works. You know, they can immediately get out, check out from the hospital. Mm. Just maybe in real time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then those days, even you replace that neuron, you don't need to have the silicon using other kind of material, mm. you know? Yeah. So definitely that will happen. Even now, is, uh, you see that people, uh, so called, can uh, put a chip in the rat mm. and then control rat and move movement directions, mm. right? So red want to move left, then human can control, then please move to right, then the red will follow you, yes. right? So now it's hybrid, it's almost there, mm. right? Yeah. So, so, the, so the whole world become mad now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, mm. so uh, friends, mm. now we will open to the mm. floor and uh, discuss the questions uh, from your audiences. So, um, here comes an mm. uh, academic question. Mm. So, uh, Jeffrey asked that, do you think the ELM are widely adopted in the Western AI research now? And uh, if not, uh, why is it? Okay, so the, this uh, is also a good question. Mm. So, uh, you see here, uh, uh, so actually this question is very different answer even. Uh, even some people say, if we are in North America, then that is 2011. Mm -hmm. So then the whole world will know it, right? Uh, so these are first questions. So then the second, uh, the first aspect, the second is that actually, uh, you know, see the ERM research actually is going up very quickly. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Before deep learning, before 2016. But then in 2014, the deep learning also come up. Mm -hmm. So most people move to uh, deep learning, but before then, mostly is the random forest, the, the uh, SVM, etc. Mm. So, so then I thought, you know, the research work shows whenever you have the SVM, just replace the ERM, then the result actually is not bad, at least, you know. Mm. So we have also paper published to show, say, the upbound of SVM actually happen to be the lower bound of ERM, mm. right? So, so now is the whole world working on the deep learning. And then billions of dollars, billions, not millions, okay, <laughs> billions of dollars spent on their, you know, yeah. GPU, whatever. And mm -hmm. also 10,000 people working or hundreds of thousands of people working on uh, so called open source, uh, deep learning, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This actually is irrelevant to what kind of technique is also trained based. You know, even early days, say that all the people work in the BP, right? Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, that is 1980s. Then later, nine, early in this century, most people working on SVM, right? So now most people working on deep learning in the future. So, so that, that is the uh, so-called, it's very difficult to say which one. Even deep learning, imagine. Mm. Deep learning is already there, say, is it a convolution neural algorithm, et cetera, is proposed is already in 1970s, late 1970s, then to early 1990s. Mm. And then go back, is they are popular? Not popular, right? Mm. So mo most of the so-called famous technique is always the, uh, in, you know, okay, there is a chain, okay, like a stock market. You have the uh, good research technique. And then the first wave, okay, so people say, first people do not believe it. Believe it. Mm. And then slightly, so, okay, it's good, work. Okay, so they go to a first peak. And then after then, they say, so what? Right? And then it seems that I all have done before. Okay, so then go to the uh, slowly move down. And then the second trend is that further verification. And then become a popular. You see all the technique in that way. Yes. Even the stock market is enough. People stay there for a long time, waiting for the chance. You know, mm -hmm. then go up. Then people find, okay, good, earn some money, give away, <laughs> then go down. Yeah. And then go to the second wave. Mm. That is a true way of coming. Yes. Right? So you know AI also the same, right? Mm. So first AI, so AI proposed, I mean the uh, term is proposed in 1950s. Mm. 
uh, Rosenblatt perception proposed in the 1950s, and then people didn't believe it. And then the uh, AI winter come in 1970s, so AI winter. Mm. And then BP Airgrams or Hindu Metal contribution save AI community. And then people said, oh, okay, good. So called perception can be trained by BP Airgram. So yes. then 1980s, new hope coming. Yeah. And then later, so what? Local minimum issue either, mm. either run so slow, then go to the second AI winter, you see? come down again mm, yes. and then go up. Yeah. You see, all the technical work in that way. Okay. Yes. So even your lifetime the same, right? So you all say successful then in some way and then set it back mm. and then you move because you learn from the failure in some sense. Yes. Okay. So now we are in the rising <laughs> period, right? Uh, we are in, yeah, we are coming back, yeah. you know. Yeah. So this is why is there uh, all the technique, mm. even AI, entire AI development, you see always this uh, so-called second uh, wave mm. development yes. or third wave development. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, here <clears throat> comes another question from uh, Cheng Rui. <clears throat> so Cheng Rui asks, um, <clears throat> could you share more on what ELM application will be developed in the near future? <clears throat> so the uh, applications of ELM. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so, so for... Uh, Okay, ERM actually is the, uh, we just mentioned, so especially for small to medium data, right? Mm -hmm, so yes. it's, the, uh, it's good for cl uh, classification. So for mm -hmm. example, you can, uh, I think the next round will be, so you have the, say deep learning, data, feature learning, mm -hmm. learner features, then plus ERM for classi classification. So usually you will get a better result than deep learning alone, and also better than ERM alone, because ERM for classification, where is the feature? You can have uh, handcrafted features, right? Yes. But then deep learning is good, better than the handcrafted feature because at least the so called learning based, right? Mm. Of course, yes. this also assumes the data is communicated enough, the data are not not enough, but otherwise, you can't learn enough features. Yes. Uh, mm. So, this, that is the first, the, uh, I think, the, uh, one of the main trends we are working. And then, sec we want to get a universal kind of, the, uh, such kind of. Uh, uh, implementation. Then the second, we wish to have the uh, so-called uh, try to significantly reduce the complexity of deep learning, mm. right? So we just mentioned, so the uh, ERM actually can uh, replace deep learning in some sense. So now we uh, actually get a better result in uh, scoring some benchmark data set than uh, deep learning, like a minister data set right, the traffic sign mm -hmm. recognition better than the deep learning. And uh, also the CIFA 10, now CIFA 100, we are going to better than uh, deep learning. Then the ImageNet, mm -hmm. we also similar, but we have published. We want to have some significant result and then put together. Yes. Yeah, so 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 th this what we are doing, okay. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> so um, here comes another question. Mm -hmm. I think um, our audience are very interested in mm -hmm. ELM. Mm -hmm. So uh, he asked that, um, so uh, where is ELM going from your point of view? So I think this is um, same as the question mm -hmm. of the uh, mm -hmm. future trend of development mm -hmm. of ELM. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, this audience, uh, I think we have already discussed this. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, and also here's, uh, I think due to the time limitation, mm. um, here's one last question mm. we discussed. So um, this one uh, he asked, are you currently involved or interested in the recent explainable AI field? In your opinion, would explainable AI become a new hot trend in the near future like deep learning decades ago? Okay, so, <laughs> Uh, for explainable AI, frame speaking, mm. I don't know how to interpret explainable AI. Mm. Of course, m most of people say AI is like black box, right? Mm. Is the uh, or somehow out of control, mm. right? So, or in the future, when the uh, robot or the machine or AI uh, system become more and more intelligent, and then their data become more and more complicated, so. Uh, so one day auto control, right? Mm. So you don't know where, uh, what the machine will do. Okay, so so in general, I think is the uh, 
so called uh, like a doctor. Mm. Why the doctor using AI algorithm? First, they don't care about the accuracy. They want to say this can be explained. Mm, yes. At least then they can know what is the picture, what is the real reason to resolve such kind of consequence, right? Yes. They, they kind of say, is it patient? Then because the AI tell me you have to do it in this way, give this medicine, then I have to give the patient this medicine. Mm. The doctor will ask why, right? So mm. in that case, explainable. That, that, that is what I, uh, uh, what I understand. Mm. So, so in this case, I think it's uh, definitely explainable AI is the very important. Mm. But in some applications, not all areas, say every, all the areas have to explain what is a explainable AI. That is the problem then, because say, go competition. AlphaGo computer world champion. Then you say, hey, you have to explain say, what, how the AlphaGo uh, <laughs> win that can contest. No, no one can explain. Yeah, right. No one mm. can explain. So, so this is why I think it's a uh, case, but depends mm. in what kind of application. So, if we want controllable, like uh, like weapons, so we have a weapon control. Otherwise, it's a bigger problem. Mm. So, in the future, I think it is uh, AI also need to be controllable. Yes, because otherwise, auto control, right? Mm. So, so this is why so for AI expert, when they develop an AI algorithm, we also have to consider this. As what I mentioned, one day the second turning point is coming. I really, Frank, being I will worry about that, mm. you know. And uh, AI itself, uh, okay, also follow the Darwinism. Now yes. this why this why is that robot learn from each other. So robot will be become more intelligent, right? Yeah. Uh, robot will adapt to a new environment. So mm. so this kind of when become more and more complicated. Mm. It's actually it's difficult to explain AI, but only for some some period, mm. some some application, and also another issue I think I wanted to highlight share with you. Uh, currently, when we talk about AI, most of us talk about one kind of the specific AI algorithm say for, for such kind of application, whether you're classification or something. Mm. But in the future, it will become more and more complicated, like a system, like a software system, hardware system. So hardware system, you have a lot of components. Yeah. Then software system, also a lot of components. Originally, yeah. the software system maybe started from one function and then one file and then one, sub, one system, right? Yeah. So later on, you have them say many subsystems and then this subsystem also have many many sub functions mm, yes very complicated then all yeah. added together how do you explain them it's very difficult yeah right software difficult. still can explain mm. how about ai so each of them work independently and then they will find their own relationship mm. is 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 very tough so i think is explainable ai is very important mm. But it's difficult to extend it to everywhere, anywhere, yeah. anytime, mm. for any yes. system. I, I don't think so either. But then for some critical area, I mm. think that is important. Yeah. Even you don't want to use it. Before you can explain, do not use it. Mm. So only you can explain, then you can use it. Otherwise, you, don't, you do not feel confident. Mm. Yes. Or otherwise, it will become auto-control, yeah. right? So that is my opinion. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so mm. uh, I believe mm. due to mm. time limitation, uh, I believe our dialogue mm. have to mm. end here. Mm. So uh, thank you, Prof, for being here with us mm. today. And um, mm. if you audiences have any further questions, you can get in, uh, connected with mm. us on uh, LinkedIn with Prof Huang and also MLDA. And you can also uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. So uh, thank you again for coming here, Prof Huang. Uh, thank, thank you, Yijie, and uh, thank MLDA Chibo Yi. Yeah, it's yeah, our so honor to invite you. You have done a very wonderful job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Mm. Yeah. Mm.